Probably running a bit late after work today, so we're just gonna um we're just gonna get right into it. Me thinks. Trying to eat my dinner as well. It's like I said, a little bit late getting out of work today. Um mm. Alright. Well, welcome to yet another uh, Quinlan Cup Qualifier Series. We had a couple um, not casted on Monday. For like the first time ever not casting some of the games in the tournament. So, um, you know, Pai and Jamedi, uh really nicely rescheduled for today. So, um, we will go over the lists. We got some spice here for sure in this lineup. Um... What are, we, what are we starting off here? We're starting off with the Carapace uh, right off the bat here. And definitely going to have some spice with the... You know, this isn't your traditional Keltullus list. This this isn't your mother's Keltullus. And we got, uh, we got Carapace, but it looks like a Carapace kind of like a vampire's mixture here. Um, we saw a little bit of people trying out this kind of like devotion stuff when um, Detlaf and... Uh, Unseen Elder here were initially released. So when those were initially released, we uh, we saw a lot of people trying this out um, as a alternative potentially to Blood Scent, which typically goes with vampires, right? To, to maximize that Oriana value. Instead, just trying to maximize keeping Unseen Elder and Detlaf alive. So. A good sandwich chap. Um... Yeah, so that's the first list, therapist list, and then we got mobilization. This is the siege slash resupply uh, deck that Pi has played um, a decent amount of uh, last season. Like he was playing, I know, a little bit off of off of a stream just to meme around a little bit. Oh fuck, fuck off, Microsoft. Um, but he was kind of like memeing around with this deck a little bit. Um, I saw a couple games of it. I don't know, sometimes it, it, like it feels like it's just a little bit off of an actual archetype. Like, just a couple more, like, payoff resupply cards, and I think this could be kind of a interesting, fun way to go for NR. Possibly when we finally get Hensolt back in the game, because, oh, come on, man. Hensolt, really? Not a card yet? Come on. Hmm. This is resupply really just... Wow, this is the fewest amount of fours I think I've ever seen in my life. Three fours. Uh, Gravish would be... I mean, old Gravish would be like... Oh, you know. But polarization Gravish would be turning in his grave uh, a little bit here with this few of fours. Um, but old, old 15 5P uh, Gravish would be, you know... Not able to walk, so. Whole year of supporting your mother. You need back surgery, man. A whole year of supporting my mother. I have to. You got to be crippled at this point. Imagine trying to carry that weight for a year. Hmm. Well, thank you, Paya, for the for the twelve months, man. I appreciate it. Um. But yeah, resupply. Uh, kind of nice to see Trollolol. Uh, Trollolol here. Um, you know, it's basically like a, a two point on every. You know, if he doesn't get answered, but he also plays Gigatol, which is kind of yeah. Um, moving um to Gorilla Tactics. Okay, so we got like a, a Witcher's. Uh, this isn't even like too like out there. Like, I feel like there's a lot of like cheeky shit you can do with this one. You know, like with protecting Gezerus behind Defender, just popping them back out. Um, just getting a lot of value off of your uh, your Elven protectors and stuff. So just uh, this, this this engine list could uh could 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 be a little bit scary. Um, at least scarier than the other ones. I feel like. Uh, then again, I haven't really seen a lot of like vampires and only saw a couple of games of resupply, but I feel like. Out of those three decks so far, this would be the more terrifying one. But then again, we have line packets is the last one to look at. Um, 
Actually, this is the most terrifying, right? Like, Igor is just like a scary card if he goes off. We saw Wilson showing the true power of uh, Igor Townsfolk uh, back in the last month's Quillen Cup Finals, so. I'm going... I almost feel like this is just going to receive the ban because, like, Line Pocket is just really strong. Cleaver's broken. Novograd and Justice is broken. Um, Tunnel Drill is still giga strong, so... Um, and then safe crackers are also terribly scary. So I figure like this is just going to get the ban. But we can go quick, take a look at uh, Gemetti's lineup. I'm just going to open up the bans for them. I am running a bit late, so a little bit, little bit rushing myself today. Eating my food at the same time. A little bit unprofessional, but who said this tournament was ever professional? Ever. All right, bans are open. Uh, let's see here. Uh... Since Pi is in chat, uh, just gonna make sure Jimeni knows bands are open. Um, but yeah, so Jimeni's decks today. No, I gotta close out and open up now. Um, and I also have to go into OBS. I forgot to have. So this is uh, Jimeni's lists. We have Ursi and Richo. We have Enslave. We have Gift, and we have Lined Pockets. Um, again, we're just going to see like another, a quick go into line pockets, I guess, because I'm assuming that's just more of like the band bait type of thing. We've seen a lot of people bring like meme, meme lists with just that for band bait, because why not? Um, okay, so yeah, kind of like band bait. This is kind of like the, the Wongid, like going for horse and like banning Skellige kind of like strategy. Um, ooh, and then we get to see the Siri Nova Enslave. Uh, with with Kair, what what a juice, what a juice master pot. Colgrim too. Mm. This is basically just like a deck that. Hey, do you have answers? Do you have an answer for Kair? Do you have an answer for Colgrim? Do you play heavily in the Kair? Um, but it's kind of like a ban Skellige strategy, all right? Like we kind of said that with the uh, line pockets, it was looking like kind of a strategy of that. Potentially, um, you know, because Horson is just so bad in the Skellige, so is um, so is Kair. Um, but then you have like Gift, which is oh well. I mean, this Gift, who? Uh, I mean, <laughs> can't really say it's strong in the Skellige. This is a little bit of a piley Gift. Um, hmm. So we got Lambert. And Sa Saskia is a card you have not seen in a while. Interesting. So Saskia, a bit of a dwarf package. Um, and then kind of just Lambert chilling in there. So I uh, wonder what the Lambert is uh, is going in here for. Um, but yeah, Saskia, uh, that being like... Here, let me translate this first. What does Saskia even do? We finished the bands. Oh, fuck. Okay, well... Uh, let me see if uh, you guys are too fast. Okay, line pockets and gorilla tactics. I can understand the gorilla tactics ban again. That's that's like one of the more cohesive decks. I feel like maybe he's feeling like he can disrupt the Igor enough. And then yeah, I mean, Jametti had line pockets. I feel like for ban. But, um, yeah, I guess we're just gonna go straight into it. Um, because I am uh, a little bit late today. I kind of rushed home from work and I'm like, shit, am I going to get back in time to even start this? Um, but yeah, I'll add you, Paya, if I don't get in. So yeah, just be prepared to look at Discord. I didn't get into like the last series I played. Um, so I'm assuming it's going to start working that way again, sadly, uh, and just not allowing me in. You guys get to hear a little bit of a little bit of food food ASMR today. Lucky you. I'm gonna try and move away from the mic because this this food is kind of like gross. Just to hear out of the corner of the mic because it's like drips. Actually, I think I made it in too. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, so sweet. Uh, I love making it into the meme games, or when people are running complete piles, like more so than just the meta deck ones. Um, so yeah. Uh, excited to make it in, but we'll see how long it lasts because, like, last time we made it into the first game and then just started dropping, so we'll see. Um, so we got Igor Townsfolk into Siri Nova Enslave here. This is Enslave 5. Yeah, it's Enslave 5. Um, Kair. Wow, Kair is going to have to get answered, right? Um, Philippa. I mean, there's a defender, so you're going to have to get through defender. And then also get through Kair. Or, I mean, you could possibly just win uneven and try and bleed. And just value bleed, potentially. Um, you do have to get through this uh, this Helga, however. So, otherwise it's going to be... Let's see how many tactics he has, though. Actually, uh, well, War Council could maybe be two, so that's four. Um... No way you ever play Defender this round. So, like, you got four tactics, potentially. Um, so you can get quite a good bit of points and removal on the Helga here. Paya does have access to the Justice. Doesn't have the extra... Doesn't have the extra um, Halfling in hand, however. Uh, what, a, what a Chad time to, like, go for your Walter Veritas and just hit... Hit the halfling safe cracker. That'd be a Chad move. Bards across the empire will sing of this day. So, Jimeni, trying to play around, trying to play around Philippa here, is that's the only answer from Paya to deal with this uh, hefty Helga. And with him going up to eight coins, it's something you gotta have to consider, right? So it's gonna be kind of hard for Paya to win this round. I feel like, um, I mean, you get in one, two, three. I mean, there's not even enough. Uh, yeah, he's just looking to get out uh, and develop carryover, because like, it's just kind of a uh, kind of awkward for him to win this round. He needed both halflings. He needed a decent amount of crimes to get value out of those halflings for him to even think about pushing here, or he needed uh, Jamedi to not have a Helga. Nothing will stop my blade. I trust you have sharpened. So round one is pretty much over. Paya doing a nice job of making it a little bit awkward, I guess. Um, you know, not allowing uh, Jamedi to thin out these hunting packs is kind of annoying for him. But here we see the Clown Alchemist come out. This is what, uh, we see Gorther, Gorther come down for the Clown Alchemist. And what I like to call Gorther is the Clown Factory or the Bounce House. Um, so the Bounce House hits the board and steals a Halfling. I mean, not like the worst steal, to be honest. Because now Pi only has one left for his Novigradian Justice and then it's bricked. So definitely something he's going to have to consider in these round two mulligans. So, you see Jimeni drawing into Kair, the big uh, problem card for Paya, if you were to call it that, or call it, like, suss out, like, his biggest problem. Um, actually, is it even that big of a problem? I mean, you fill up with the defender, you fill up with the defender, and then you just dr drill, you drill away. Um, I suppose. Um... So fill up a defender and drill away. Kair can't really come down to get like protected any more than that. Um, is there anything? There's nothing you can really have like sitting and waiting to get this defender buffed up out of fill up a range either. And then with these six coins with line pockets just sitting there, I kind of like this a little bit. Like you do this on seven cards, like you know, to kind of test to see if Philip is there. Um, 
If it's not, then you just kind of you kind of just jam and bleed this round. And if you fill up a zoo, you can just pass. So we see the coded weapons quick come down to answer this uh, answer this tax collector. Again, at seven cards, Jamini can always still pass if Philippa comes down. So we'll see what Paya decides to do. I, likely Paya doesn't want a Philippa, so <laughs> at least not yet. So we'll see what he's going to try and do here. We see Furco come down. Um, looks like kind of roll into the justice here. So again, a little bit uh, expensive here, but if Jamini decides to, to push into this uh, with the lack of a Philippa, he can also... Ooh, Jamedi could tourney joust this uh, this defender though, right? Decides not to go for it. Doesn't Pyo just always fill up with this just in case? Because now you just have card advantage, right? I would have almost liked to see the tourney joust come down on this defender to buff it up out of range because there's nothing Pyo can do to really deal with it it takes a couple turns to like get the tunnel drill down and then get through a shield and armor but paya decides not to go for this line So likely we're going to see that, that Philippa come down, right? And then possibly we're just going to get the Tourney Joust to come down onto Kair. Or if we see Philippa come down... Yeah, I mean, Jemeni's not able to like, damage and steal it back, unfortunately. No I would have liked to see the Tourney Joust come down on Fion to be honest but still quite a few coins uh this guy is gonna be actually kind of hard to deal with right because you need to get coins and to do that most of the ways to get coins are buffs right it's gonna buff kair so i think kair just might not die now hey Hey Kunkapu, thank you for the raid, man. I appreciate it. Hopefully the stream went really well. We're uh we're just uh, casting a little bit of uh Paya taking on Jametti with their you know, doing a little bit of a pile off here. Why didn't I see it? Nose, mouth, any hole will do. Any hole will do, chat. You heard it here first. Any hole will do. Um, the senses can be truly easily. Get to see a good, st pretty strong Artorias come down here for this uh, for this thinning uh, hunting pack to get this all out of deck. Uh, again, Pius still has to contend with this. Uh, this Kair value is going to want to try and you know put down points without buffing too much. Um, so. Whenever you gain coins, boost self by one. So, yeah, Kair buffing up. Kair is just going to stay alive now. But does this hand forge? I mean, these these uh, these these Viper Witcher mentors are coming down for what elevens? They're coming down for eleven. So, might be a little tough for. For Paya to keep ahead of these. Jacques, Jacques can keep up with one, but then there's another, and then there's also a leader, so it could be it could be a little bit tough. Oh, I like this. Using the, the Igor spending on some cleaver's muscle just to just to get some points that way. Um so again, Paya has to try and uh, uh, he's able to he just gets out. So Jamedi just takes the pass here. And Paya able to save Jacques and a Nero. That's really, really good for him. Um, the only thing to contend with now is this uh, is this Colgrim. And I mean, is Colgrim gonna be that big? And it, I think Tunnel just straight kills Colgrim, right? Um, 
we see a halfling safe cracker here um as well as like cleaver to get the pocket so hopefully he finds either cleaver or tunnel drill if he doesn't it might be a little bit uh a little bit annoying but tunnel drill is gonna have to try and kill this colgrim a sire on a knicker so sire's playing for nine Oh, finds the cleaver. So now this Viper Witcher Mentor is only hitting for nine. So really good to hit this cleaver here, obviously. I like to improvise. But yeah, Tunnel Drill should just like... Tunnel Drill should just clap off the Colgrim. Uh, spending once with the cleaver um luckily or likely gonna go to like a swindle next turn potentially to get the coins and then just tunnel drill when the when the colgrim comes down and again spending with the cleaver just to make sure that he has the pocket down <clears throat> sire going front row so he's really trying to keep um, Colgrim alive. He's trying to get the extra point on Colgrim when he comes down. To, so it's going to be at three. So Colgrim is going to go to ten right away. But I mean, Tunnel Drill is always able to do this damage, right? I almost wish he would have held the leader because then like I mean I guess he's going Roderick now he has to go and try and maximize Colgrim yeah and unfortunately Colgrim's gonna get dog diddled right just gonna get dog diddled yeah Roderick couldn't even break up the pocket which is a bit sad too yeah Poor Colgrim getting diddled like a dog. Or diddled like Chat's mother, I guess. So, yeah, a dog. And game one, going to Paya here. Um, lined pockets, uh, surprisingly getting through. Um, but again, I feel like in terms of ban, it was either this line pockets from Paya or the, again, I, I don't think the, the, the grill attack is was a terrible ban from Jimetti. It's also pretty, it has some pretty good control on it too with the, with the movements, uh, and Brian. So, uh, just could also have a lot of engine value that could be tough. Um, so, uh, All right, and we move on into game number two here. Um, Paya has left. Uh, again, I keep forgetting that I have display capture. There we go. Um, Paya has left now. This carapace list might be a little bit, ah, uh, not great. Uh, mobilization, I feel like, is more cohesive than this carapace list, but maybe maybe the carapace is better than I'm, I'm thinking. I don't know. But like this enslave from Jametti, um Yeah, it should, I mean it should be fine in the carapace for sure. Like Kayur is gonna potentially smurf pretty hard. I'd have to go and look. I don't think there's purify and movement from Paya in that list. Oh, I mean I guess Oberon could create some, to be honest. But it looks like Paya is trying to get this monsters through now, giving him the most uh uh, being able to play this deck uh, as many times as possible um, to try and get through this series again I think it's gonna be a harder deck to get through at least with northern realms like your siege can carry you so there's that whereas this monsters deck I don't know what carries you to be honest I guess you just hope that you're uh, you're where is he there is this yeah 
know. Just gotta hope the Unseen Elder lives and it gets to smurf. But, like, so Jamedi is a heat wave in this deck, and that's, that's about it. That is about it. So now I'm gonna go and read Saskia, guys, because I'd. Fuck me if I know what this card does uh, at this point in time. Okay. Well, game, uh, Jamedi's not allowing me to read it. He's smorking too fast. Um, okay, you spawn a Deadeye, a Rowdy Dwarf, or a Young Dryad. Okay. Interesting. Kind of curious as to why he chose Saskia. Just because it's like, cool card art. This is, I kind of do miss Saskia a little bit. Uh back in beta where she used to what she used to shuffle cards back into your deck it was like with the the francesca mulligan archetype right wasn't that old beta saskia someone correct me i feel like that's what it was it was used in like siri dash lists right I wonder how long you last. <clears throat> I mean, if Sasuke is just used for extra symbiosis, I mean, I guess it's a provision cheaper than Ithne. But Ithne gives a whole extra symbiosis tag. Paya actually getting the double bonded... Pl I can't... I can't actually remember, like, the last time I had, like, bonded plumards. Or bonded anything, rather. Like, I don't know. I just... Never ever draw those in round one, but it is very satisfying when you get it. Obviously, Plumer, you know, playing for four, four bleeding can be quite nice. And it looks like Jametti not taking the buff again, possibly baiting a bleed so he can caress for some real nice extra value. Um, you know, Paya has potential. I mean, he could just set up Garcane, just play a little bit slow. I mean, I don't. I, yeah, I don't know really what you do. Maybe because it's non-devotion, you can take a long round. Like, I, sorry if I'm not familiar with the non-devotion gift in the in a vampires matchup, guys. I uh, apologize for that one. But I mean, heat wave has to come down on the defender, and then like all your other significant engines just leave live. So like, I mean, I feel like. Against a non-devotion gift, you're going to be okay in the long run. So, like, gift should bleed. Gift should want to get round control and bleed. All right, so Paya outweighing this, uh, this bait here with the Dryad's Caress. Uh, the Crest coming down. There's one more from Fauve, and then also another one from Forest Protector yet. But Paya committing the Unseen Elder here, uh, a very committal line of play. You know, this is a, one of his big engines that he wants to keep alive. And then also committing a Leader Charge here, too. So um, we see Jametti responding with the, the Shaping Nature into giving Vitality onto this Hamadryad. And again, we're seeing the, the Plume Word come to erase a little bit of this Vitality. But yeah, I have to believe it's gonna be a little bit hard for Jametti to play into this you know not having the heat wave for the elder this round it's gonna be hard to play into elder here a little bit here i feel um paya obviously gonna have troubles playing out this oberon this round but you know does have the garcane on the board does have the unseen elder engine now getting this bonded plumard um bleeding here as well uh, possibly going to get a race, though. Like, if Jametti decides to commit, he could go Force Protector um, for the full uh, commit line into another Caress. Um, and then, you know, you'd have to assume that Piaz is going to look to uh, the Queen of the Night, uh, reverse, put some more bleed on it. And it looks like that's exactly what uh, Jametti is going to do here. Uh, J You're right, he did Heat Wave. What did he Heat Wave? Totally missed that one. Oh, Nithral. So he heat waved a, Nith a TA Nithral. Okay. Yeah, I guess after spending the heat wave, you, I mean, you're kind of kind of all in because he can't answer any engines after that. 
You do win uneven here. Unless Paya like high rolls Oberon. But then again, is it like a, it's not really a high roll, right? Because he does have devotion, so conquerors are really good. But at the same time, there's a 10 point gap. It's hard to believe he's gonna continue. He just does decide to pass. Both players committing quite heavily here. Um, in this round one, Paya with a, a, I mean, both players committing a leader charge and then, you know, Force Protector is pretty significant, uh, as well as Falve and Heatwave and Lambert too. That's a lot of provisions. Um, Paya committed Nithral, Elder, and Queen of the Night. So I think provisions-wise, Paya came out a little bit ahead there, even though he lost uneven. Um, but you have to believe that Jamedi's just going to bleed all the way in and hope to clinch a, a short round with a Gord. And that is exactly what happens, uh, starting off with the Sasuke out right away here. Find yourself your own expert. Ah, Council's a little bit all over the place. Um, see a pretty good value Taskmaster here, you know, playing for uh, playing for 7 on the Taskmaster, Oberon, you know, playing for the extra 5 point body. So we do see points come down onto the board for Paya. Jimeni getting the guaranteed council onto the hammer dryad again the dwarfs were quite random but uh guaranteed hammer dryad paya quickly putting down the elp um to get that order ability ready and taking a leader charge to try and save it from a potential rebuke as well as just trying to get him ahead again yeah i mean this could be just this is actually looking quite scary for paya for uh, trying to win this round here. Looks like Jemeni going all in um, this round. Again, pretty incentivized too, right? Like just trying to trade up. So if I has 14, oh not 14, he has 16. Um, Jemeni's losing one, has the dwarf as well. We'll see if Jemeni decides to commit some leader card, the leader charges here too or not. We see the, he does commit leader charge here. Does he commit the second one on the Hamadryad as well to try to go for the full 2-0? This plays 4, 8, 10, 11. It looks like a 2-0, right? We shall conquer this yeah. world as we have conquered countless others. So it looks like Jemeni is able to 2-0 Paya here um, in the Monsters in the Gift matchup. Winning on even, a very beneficial for Jemeni there as he is able to find a pretty dysfunctional hand from Paya to defend this bleed. Again, I think this monsters might be a uh, might be Paya's kryptonite in in terms of uh trying to get through here. All right, the series is all tied up. Um both players uh, getting a deck through. We see Gift and we see Line Pockets through. So it's by his Mobilization and Monsters versus uh, Lippy and Enslave. Uh, I feel like in Enslave into the Monsters, I mean, it might be, might be quite good to go for Jemeti. And then Lippy on Red Coin is going to be extremely, uh, extremely worrisome. Uh, worrisome for Paya here I, again it's a it looks like a pretty standard lippy overall too so like nothing like too spicy or memey about it so again that's gonna be pretty scary on a red coin and you know it's gonna be pretty tough to get through Kair and slave with uh with monsters with devotion monsters rather right So it looks like Paya taking mobilization on uh, on red into this Ursine ritual here. Again, one of the few NR decks that is a little bit happy to go on these red coins. You know, this this mobilization looks a little less good than like a, a Witcher's deck. You know, uh, utilizing that stratagem for the the really handy dandy veil onto the onto the Griffin Witcher to get him to turn into a little bit of a machine gun. So unfortunately. Uh, uh, Pi doesn't really have that luxury as much in this NR list. Um, Carrick Frigates are pretty good, again, uh, for pushing those round ones, but 
a lot more reactive reactivity and setup yeah, in this deck that's best. really really slow so um especially against like this lippy list you could be kind of worried but um, you know being on red here pretty pretty good uh some of these other lists yeah i guess he just really wants that enslave on red um which makes a lot of sense but lippy on uh lippy on blue doesn't feel like the the best either but again this lippy is probably more cohesive than the other list so it's more likely to win one on blue um, and we see him drawing into just brick after brick here. Um, draws into the Knickers and a Shield Maiden, but uh, luckily the Snowdrop is able to put them back. I for you, could, you could see me catch myself as I forgot that this was a Snowdrop being played, and then he puts... <laughs> so Snowdrop luckily being able to fix uh, fix Jametti's hand for him there. Again, uh, do not want those Shield Maidens or that Knickers in hand. Morhawk <laughs> <clears throat> but Jamedi really trying to hold on to this Ceres. You know, there's a couple things Paya could do. Either he could just ditch out of this round shortly and take the longest round two to go for the bleed, or hope that Jamedi's hand starts getting awkward so it would force um, some more commitment like Ceres, which would make the bleed easier to defend in round two. Um, so you can see him play a little bit deeper and then just hold on to uh, Amphibious Assault. Um, and not play it this round and use that to defend the bleed but we shall see again heat wave is going to be kind of locked onto the siege here so Jamedi's going to have to start playing some commitment uh, this bear witcher not active on the adrenaline quite yet uh, Lugos is a bit of commitment uh, a Nero can be anything but we shall see that's what he decides to decides to commit here. I could see the Aniro. Um, burn is a bit risky with, with Nickers not getting thinned out, as well as uh, the Shield Maidens both lurking in deck. Um, Lugos makes some sense, too, um, as there are two, uh, two engines on the board here. And we see Lugos not able to kill off a single engine here. Uh, is able to put a couple of them to two. So... We're going to be able to see Bear Witcher come down to kill one of these off. We'd have to assume Paya is likely to start using some order. Yeah, he uses both orders here to kind of lessen the blow of this uh, of this Bear Witcher. And we see Jemini actually going into a Neuromancy. Uh, yeah, I was going to say Heron Kadu coming down here. Uh, going this first allows him to get this order down so that when this Bear Witcher comes down, he's able to put down quite a bit more temple, hopefully forcing, fully forcing Paya out before he gets down to the Ceres or Heat Wave. Burna as well becomes a little bit high rolly, but now that Nickers is out, it's a little bit less. But like you draw into like double shield maiden or something, you're really sad. So Paya with one resupply on the board right now that gives one um gives one point to to this cara ballista for siege card um aa i don't know this well oh, the order is also boost an allied unit by two so he's two more points here He's just, I guess, looking to see if he has the reach with his AA and maybe another card. Looks like he is giving up the round, however, and decides to get out. Now he's going to have to try and stave off this bleed coming in from this Saracen round two. And Saris, you know, Lippy's going to do what Lippy does and put out a scary amount of tempo with this Saris going into this round two here. Luckily, though, for Paya, I guess, because this is, like, Totem Snowdrop version. Or this is non-Totem, and it's the Snowdrop Curse version. I mean, Curse isn't doing... Um, Curse, I guess, comes down on Trollolol. I guess Curse is doing a decent amount. Still might be a little bit more scared of, like, a Totem or something. So 
likely going to see Paya try and time his AA a bit later to, to play around the squirrel. Uh, looks like he's just going to go slowly set up some of these resupply engines here. It's a decent amount of uh, a decent amount of um, warfare cards in hand as well, along with his Natalis. So, see him possibly still playing around the curse a little bit, holding on to this troll a little. One nice thing about this curse, I guess, or this troll a little, is it can play around curse for quite a bit, right? Like you can just hold on to the armor. You hold on the armor for quite a bit, which is nice. Is he gonna play the troll a little out here? Because right now, it's a little bit awkward. Yeah, he plays it out here to play around the curse as the bear witcher is just a 50-50 right now. If Jamidi were to play it in hand. God damn that that was a long voice line. I have not heard this card's voice lines in forever. That was long. Did not expect that. But yeah, not the greatest bear witcher here. But yeah, this Trollolo being able to just play for reach on this curse. This is actually a really nice bleed uh oh, defense tool. It's not for me. Um in this situation. Like with Natalis and then um, and then AA, along with uh, Trollolo's value, you can have a decent amount of points on the board left yet. So Natalis can pull into what? So like you AA and then you could go like Natalis reinforcements or something. I don't know. What are you AAing into? Possibly a Siege Master? But then again, Trollo is not an engine for Siege Master, I guess. He's a soldier, I guess, for Frigate. If you wanted to possibly AA into that, or he could just be really efficient and AA into Ballista. He's able just to go this Ballista here that is very, very slow, and we see Jametti snap the Heat Wave down onto this Trollo lull. Now starting to really threatening uh, a possible 2-0. I mean, this burn is still super risky. Like, I don't think it will really go for a 2-0, but does have some potential here. And we see the Siege Master combo come down here. Uh, quite a strong bleed defense tool. All right, so Paya able to stave off the bleed, having to commit the leader, but still able to actually hold on to this uh, this siege here. Uh, so, like, having siege and AA, this could be still a pretty strong round for Paya. So let's see what he's able to find. He finds the Aniro, so does have access to siege, does have um, siege engines to trigger it. Kind of looking for this Triss here, and finds Triss as well. This is a very strong-looking hand from Paya here. And we look at Jametti's hand, and see an unfortunate little squirrel um, in the hand as well as missing out on Lippy. These are some very awkward draws, but we'll see what Berna happens to get for Jametti here. It's going to be pretty, uh, pretty significant as you know, finding uh, finding like a, a Scald into. I mean, Morkvar gets discarded either way, but Scald or. Finding Scald would be really bad. Obviously, you want to discard this, and you want to discard this. So ideally, you just want your Lippy and your Curse. But anything other than that is pretty pretty upsetting of a hand. So yeah, we'll see what this Burna rolls into. This is going to be quite the Burna. Paya just going down in this reinforced ballista uh, this turn, and we see Burna come down. We see the curse. No Lippy is gonna have to Nero into the Lippy. That is absolutely devastating. Um, actually, I guess it's a 50-50. Actually, so now he's a 50-50 on the Scald. Gonna discard this curse and hopefully hit the Lippy on this 50-50 here. This is gonna be absolutely game deciding. Is this Hey May Scald? Actually, will it? 
Even if he gets the Lippy, is it going to be enough? I mean, Lippy Saris is a lot of points, but so is like this Siege with uh, Natalis and, and Triss here. Like, it's going to be... This will be a close game. It'll either be a close game or it won't be close at all, right? So we see Baye going for the reinforced Ballista here. Going to bomb down this board and absolutely just destroy it. Does not find the Lippy. Oh no, that is devastating. Does not find the Lippy. Lippy, the last card. Bottom of Jamedi's deck here. Not able to even pull out the Saris anymore. Oh, this is what you hate to see as the Lippy player. This is just. Oh, this is terrible. Yikes. Curse coming down for some somewhat okay value, but oh no. Lippy, what are you doing, mate? Actual bottom card. Dark clouds gather over Tameria. I mean, dark clouds are gathering over Skellige. Holy shit, they're gathering over Skellige. The lightning strikes down, sinking the ship. Lippy going to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, we see Triss come down here. Um, finding all of the all of Pius specials, he gets to choose what he wants here. I feel like there's nothing that can really overcome this for Jametti here. Pius knowing exactly what this last card is, and gotta be feeling a little bit bad for uh, for Jametti there. Yikes! You hate to see it. That's like the. Uh, it's got to be Lippy's like worst nightmare, ever. Yikes! Got to beg a little bit harder there. All right. So Paya now two up on Jametti. We come in to possibly one of the final games. I mean, getting this monsters through is still gonna be tough for Paya here. Um, Devotion monsters getting through both of these lists. I mean, I guess has an easier chance, I think, getting through Lippy potentially. Um, though it is going on red now. No, it's going on blue. So it's going on blue this turn, which. Uh -huh. So like you're you're incentivized to take. Enslave on this coin. Yeah, I mean, you have to take Enslave on this coin. Because, like, this Enslave deck can just lose uneven. Like, you don't find your Helga and you just lose uneven. But also, like, Lippy on blue against monsters is a little bit... Uh, not great. Okay, so he's taking Lippy on red here. Because he's just confident enough in Kair to kind of carry. Um, we see... Uh, okay, well... Huh? Skilled in drawing the Snowdrop and the Burna around one, so it's actually not going to be too bad of a hand for Jimity. Snowdrop able to correct a lot of this and get quite a good bit of value. So we'll see how Pai is able to efficiently uh, fight in this round one here. It does have a Larva. It does have double Larva, so... Um, I mean, Jimity with no Enero or Heat Wave or Curse. So, like, if he can't win this round one, it's going to be a bit unfortunate. Let's see if Paya has the big balls to go the double larva against the Lippy. I mean, I guess maybe he just intends just to... He could just intend to play super deep, and he's like, yeah, if I get the round, I'm good. Um, you know, Cursor Heatwave has to come down on Defender. Then he can answer one more engine. Hey, listen here. Listen well. Drawing in a Morkvarg, not a card you want to see. Again, Ken, use Snowdrop and go and put this Morkvarg right back. Like um, gonna all... Nicker's getting thinned out really good. Gonna also have to put back the Shield Maiden as well. Um, Squirrel not doing a whole lot in this matchup. On, Let's see here. What we do find. Ah, pretty good draws. Bear Witcher and Heron Kaduk. It's really nice. Able to put back both Morkvarg and Shield Maiden pretty easily here. Um, decides to keep the Morkvarg. What do you put back? You put back Squirrel. Okay, Squirrel's fair as well. 
Um, you can just hold on to Morkvarg to not brick him later and just put Squirrel back because it's not doing anything against this monster's deck anyway. So, you can definitely see the Squirrel here. You want to win this round uneven, so Squirrel is not going to help you do that. Neither is Morkvarg, but you'd rather just hold on to Morkvarg to not brick him in round two or three. Don't you test her mate. So, now we see the Scald come down here. What is he going to go ahead and discard? Goes ahead and discards this lowly uh, Brockvar Hunter. Uh, unfortunately, not going to hunt anyone anymore. Still has dominance for this 2 damage on this Nithral. Now, these points per turn for Paya is going to be actually quite good and threatening for this uh, for this round here. And, so ooh, we do see Jametti get a little bit greedy here. Uh, going for the Burna. Um... You know, maximizing the snowdrop value, but uh, decides to discard the Morkvarg again because he doesn't have the tempo of this Ceres really anymore. Um, but Paya does have four Thrive units on the board as well as double engine. So it's going to be something to something to start to get a little bit worried about. Like, are you going to really be able to, uh, to get this round? Um, unfortunately for Paya, he does have a lot of, like, top end in his hand, you know. So committing defender and like, well, you can commit maybe one of these like Detlaf or use or unseen elder, but you definitely don't think you want to commit both. What is? Yeah, I mean, Magnifier is a bit all over the place with its value. Now there's going to be quite a bit of turn points per turn for Paya coming down here, unseen elder unanswered now on this board state uh quite a bit coming down here as well as the garcane so jametti unfortunately having to pass there um without gaining that round control so now it allows paya to take his engines into a long round crimson curse getting a lot of value um oriana probably getting curse of corruptions but detlaf could really could really end up smurfing I feel like it's going to come down to like this debt, the how much value debt laugh and like cards like Gel really get here. I mean, you're going to get quite a quite a few turns of Blood Moon for sure, Crimson Curse and debt laugh. And we see Paya with a fully golden hand right here. Um, Jemini opting to go and take the leader charge and thin out his uh, his shield maidens to ensure he doesn't brick into them. And you know, definitely needs to definitely needed to to want to you know he definitely wanted the ability to pick and choose his hand. You know, you wanted this heat wave for sure. So in hand rather for sure wanted it in hand. Um, the squirrel not doing a whole heck of a lot. This isn't your traditional. This isn't your mother's monsters. Uh, no, no eager and Osro combo in the grave uh, for this uh, squirrel to munch on here. So, quite, quite the useless card. Probably could see the Bruxa come down next, or you could just jam the Defender if you're worried about like Bruxa just dying. Cause jam the Defender. Um, I suppose you'd rather have. So you could lead. You could jam the Bruxa, then if you jam Defender, you could also leader charge this. Uh... You could leader charge. You want him to curse the Catacan, and you want him to heat wave the Defender. So like, you know, you want to be able to play around. Uh curses as, 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 as much as possible catacan for bruxa for this right blue boy lugos all right so what is paya looking to do on this next turn uh possibly again trying to wait for this defender so he can make it so that uh this defender doesn't just get cursed again i think he wants to potentially force the heat wave on that I mean, I guess it really doesn't matter. Because either way, one of these, this is getting dealt with, and then this will be the one that gets dealt with. Me thinks. 
So maybe he just drops the defender anyway. Okay. Takes the Gel value. The Gel value playing around this curse here. I actually really like this Gel here. Gel disabling the engine. And now actually playing around the curse as well. So I do really like this Gel. And can just drop the defender and hold on to leader charges. So. Take care of your blades and they'll take care of you. So now we see Crimson Curse coming down onto this back row. We got a whole bunch of vampires on this back row as well for this Detlaf to get his uh, his deployability pretty nice. And pretty soon, Jemetti's going to start putting Shield Maidens onto the front row. So. Time for some marauding. Roach also going back row here. Um. Nickers still hanging out in the deck yet. Still nothing on the front row, but Jemetti's going to have to go onto that front row pretty darn soon. But this could be Paya's defender turn, where he just gets the defender down on the warboard, ready to do his job and defend. Um, or rather, do his job and get torched by the sun. Um, Your deepest, darkest okay. dream. I can, I think this is fine to just stalling a little bit more. Uh, gotta hope that the squirrel doesn't get hit too many times by Blood Moon to waste your value, but um, I can see the, I can see just stalling a little bit more. All that dancing around, it's not for me. Because you really don't need a defender. So now if you stall long enough, it could start to get awkward for him. So I, I kind of like stalling for a good little bit. Now. Cape Troll is able to get heat waved. So like Gal getting hit down is a little bit whatever. But playing around it pretty well by buffing Queen of the Night here. So are we gonna see the debt laugh potentially come down to try and get some nice value? Um, has a nice death blow actually activated onto this Lugos here as well, so. You want to see, because I think Detlap is where you're going to get your value. Humans, yeah. You are all the same. He damages only bleeding units? Oh, okay. Well, I, I thought it was just going to work like just da getting death. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit sad then. Never mind. I mean, is it... Is it... I mean, you get it on the, the squirrel, I guess. You get it on the Hyrnkin. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he's still getting some okay value. I stood by silent, but then no cries. So, Paya doesn't have to really do anything about this Oriana yet. Curse of Corruption still not doing anything. You could potentially just see Paya take a leader charge to make sure this Oriana doesn't die as well. I'm so, it lives yet. It gets another turn of bleeding. I think that's what we might end up seeing here. Is an extra leader charge onto like Queen of the Night to potentially play around Oriana. Actually, no, he's not able to get any more bleeding. No, I guess you just don't care. Yeah, Curse of Corruption is only going to be an 8. I think Paya actually has this here. Yeah, with two leader charges left, pretty easy. Easy long round three for Paya. Doesn't really actually have to use leader charges. I don't know why I was saying that. I thought he was going to have more bleeding for whatever reason. Yeah, actually Devotion Monster is not being the bane of his existence. And unfortunately for Jemetti, Lippy, Lippy not doing Lippy things. You know, having to uh, having to miss out on your Lippy was pretty bad there um, in that NR match. So Paya making it on to the finals. I know... Uh, uh, not to not to flame the the masters world champ uh, but does not have the greatest record in the in the quill and cup tourney so maybe just maybe we can see him start to pull through a little bit more but yep that is the the series for today a little bit of a smork fest uh, <laughs> very much just slamming the cards down so I don't know a fun quick little series I, I enjoyed that one 